God bless you, brothers and sisters, and welcome back to Cloud9 Blessings. I hope that you are all having a very beautiful and blessed day. Thank you so much for clicking on this video today so that we could experience another powerful submission that has been emailed into the channel. So before we get started into today's video, if you have had your very own rapture dream, vision, tribulation dream, or even a near-death experience that you would like to share with the channel and have it made into a video just like this, please email it to cloud9blessings at gmail.com. In this video today, we are going to be looking at a submission that was emailed in by our dear sister in Christ, Jamie, where she wanted to share with the channel a very urgent warning dream that she received in May. So let's now take a look and see what our sister in Christ saw in her dream. Hey there, I just got done watching a video on um, Cloud9 Blessings. I don't know if you guys go there, but um, it was today's video and I'll try to post the link and it really encouraged me to share another dream I've had. It wasn't a rapture dream, it was more of a warning dream. And um, this woman encountered a giant in her dream. And this is the first time I've kind of heard something like this. So it just got me fired up, like maybe I need to share my warning dream because my dreams are very symbolic. They're hard to understand. If you listen to my um, rapture dream, very symbolic, not literal at all. And so I'm always having to dig into God's word and pray and think about things before I really understand them. This dream I had back in May, but it was of this year. May, um, gosh, it was mid-May. I can't remember the exact date. I wrote it down somewhere. But um, in my dream, I'm looking out across a horizon and it's across a river which makes sense because I live right by the river and I can look across it and see um, Washington. And in my dream, I'm looking across at what I think is a beautiful sunset, oranges and reds, and I'm just kind of looking at it in awe. And then suddenly something eerie happens and I'm looking at this sunset and it's growing fast and this ominous feeling fills my body as I realize that's not a sunset. And the word destruction filled my head, destruction. And right as I'm starting to be filled with fear, like I need to find my kids, I need to contact my parents, like something bad's about to happen. I'm somewhere else. I'm in this little coffee shop with a bunch of people still don't understand that part of my dream. So when I say symbolic or that's what I mean is some, there's some parts of my dream I can't explain, but there's a ton of us and what I feel is a coffee shop and it's kind of quiet. And then suddenly there's some like excited chatter happening and I'm kind of peeking around like, okay, well, what's going on? And I realize Jesus is walking in. Jesus is walking in to this coffee shop and I am immediately giddy, like a little girl, like I'm jumping up and down. I'm, I'm so excited, I can't contain myself. Um, it's a version of me I have never encountered because I'm usually very, especially in crowds of people, very kind of reserved and, you know, just quiet. I'm a quiet person, but I don't care. This is Jesus and I am jumping up and down. I'm so excited, I can't hardly contain it. And then, He's approaching me of all people in this crowd and I can't hardly believe it. And I'm so excited. I almost can't hear what he says, but he says straight to me, the giants are coming. And I'm so excited. It's like, it's just kind of rolling off my head. I'm not, I'm not taking him seriously. How can you be scared or take something like that seriously when you have Jesus right next to you? But then he says it again and he's very stern. Like he's trying to get it through to me. The giants are coming. And then I woke up. And this dream has confused me for a while because one moment it feels like a tribulation dream, right? I'm seeing something happening on a horizon and then I'm somewhere else. And then there's Jesus. And then this warning. 
the giants are coming. And for a while, I'm such a concrete person. I couldn't think of it symbolically. I thought, does he mean literal giants? Like the giants of old are coming? And um, I realized, no, 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 he's, he's talking symbolically. Spiritual giants are coming, not the good ones. We're near the end. And I know many of you have noticed things have gotten harder and harder and harder. Spiritual warfare is ridiculous. I have to constantly be in his word, constantly. Uh, my family is under spiritual attack a lot. And we're a big family, so I think it's an easy target. Um, but we constantly have to pray over ourselves, stay in God's word. And I think of this verse I'm about to read. And it's the same one um, that this lady shared from her rapture dream that got me all sparked up and excited to share this. Um, Ephesians 6, 12. For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. And she knew because she had prayed that that was the interpretation of her dream, that that giant was a representation of the evil we would face. Her dream was a little more specific. She had kind of walked away from God and that was the consequence was facing like a spiritual giant that was about to take her out. But my dream, the warning felt very personal. Not, not that I was walking away. No, as you walk with me, there are going to be giants. And I've got to tell you, since May, I have faced them. It has been hard. And I can't say that it's been anything that the world would recognize. We haven't had financial ruin. We haven't had any disasters or health issues. It has been spiritual. It has been spiritual. And um, I think this warning should be shared because as we all know, it's just getting darker around us. It's getting darker and darker and we need to put on that spiritual armor. It's needed. The gospel, the word of God, our faith, right? We gotta put that stuff on every day all day long. I'm an all day long person because I'm weak. I'll be honest, I am weak. When uh, Jesus talks through the Beatitudes and he talks about the spiritually weak person, that's me. And um, that was a really sad realization for me. I, I, it's not something I wanna boast about. It's not, it's, um, it bothers me, but I've learned to work with it. I am spiritually weak. I am easily discouraged. So what do I do? I stay in God's word all day long. The moment I start to feel that weakness creep into me, right? That I just want to give up feeling. I just want to put my head in the sand feeling. And it happens a lot. I get back in his word because I want the promise at the end of that. So like Matthew 5. Sorry, I should have been ready. Let me see if I can find it real quick. Because even though it's embarrassing and I hate that I'm that person, I hate, I'd rather be the meek, right? I mean, like there's, there's some good things about being meek, but being spiritually weak, oh, I hate that, that that's me, spiritually weak. Um, let's see if I can find it. Sorry, I want it, oh, there it is. Or in this version, it says poor, poor in spirit. Blessed, sorry, let me give you the reference. It is Matthew 5, verse 3. Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. I hold on to that promise because even though I hate that first part, blessed are the poor in spirit, I want to be a spiritual giant, right? Especially if Jesus just warned me, I'm going to face giants. I wish I could be a spiritual giant. And I've seen those people the rock solid faith. Um, they're just so sure no matter what they face. I am poor in spirit. I need constant reminders of God's goodness. I'm the person that has to pull out a piece of paper and start writing down all my blessings so that I can physically see them and remind myself how good God is. And I, I confess that to you. 
I am poor in spirit. But what I love is that it doesn't say I can't make it. God is so good for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. And I know that the trick to that, right? If I'm poor in spirit, but I don't lean on him, well, I'm not gonna get to heaven. Behind that, I have to trust in him. I have to keep my eyes on him. And when he warns me there's giants coming, I better take him seriously and I better get ready and I better dig my feet down right into the firm ground that he provides me. And I hold on because I know who I am. I know I'm an easy target for this enemy, right? Poor in spirit. I mean, who's going to go? Who's he going to go after? The spiritual giant or me? <laughs> me. So if you feel like you're like me and you're just kind of weak sauce when it comes to spiritual warfare, take hope. For theirs is the kingdom of heaven. He's not leaving us out. We might leave ourselves out. If we completely walk away, if we give up, that's our fault. But if we hold on, right? I may not be the one standing next to him during the spiritual warfare. I may not even be the one kneeling next to him. I may be the one just holding on to the hem of his garment, but I made it in. I made it in. So this warning of giants, I think we should take it seriously. Everything going on is big and real. The spiritual is becoming more real. Have you noticed that? It used to feel so easy to forget, right? The physical is always in our face. But the more I walk with him and the more I see what's going on, the more I am realizing the spiritual side of things is far more real than what we see physically. And we have to hold on to him. We have to. Anyways, I hope this helps you and blesses you. And um, go check out that other lady. I'll try to remember to put the link um, under my video, either in comments or something. But she had a great dream. And um, it might even back mine up a little stronger. God bless you. Thank you so much, Sister Jamie, for sharing this very urgent warning dream that you received in May. And I completely agree with you that we wrestle not against flesh and blood but against principalities and that is happening right now many are going through spiritual warfare and i have received many emails from a lot of the channel subscribers that are going through that right now because we are living in the end times and the wickedness is so heavy right now that the evil one is trying to devour whomever he can because he knows that he has but a short time. And because we are going through that, what we can do, as, as she said, is always seeking the word of God, seeking to read, to understand, asking the Lord to protect us always, even as it says in Psalm 91. And also, as it says in the Bible, that when Noah was going into the ark, in the days that Noah were, also shall the coming of the Son of Man be. And before the flood took place, there were giants that was happening at that time prior to the flood. And it is happening again with spiritual wickedness in high places. So I truly pray that all of you have protection by our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ call on him ask him to protect you always and he will because we are his children and we are that blessed generation that will see him return in the clouds and that should give you so much hope our sister in christ youtube channel is in the description box so please subscribe to her channel and i will be attaching the dream that she is mentioning at the very end of this video so that you can view it yourself because it does coincide as to what she experienced in her end times dream if you are blessed by this ministry and would like to help and support the channel it would be so greatly appreciated the donation information is in the description box and we also now have an amazon wish list that would truly help the channel to be able to create more footage for brothers and sisters in Christ from around the world. I truly thank you for taking the time to watch this video today, brothers and sisters. I truly hope that it blesses each and every one of you. May God bless you and have a very blessed week.